Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder, to the second iteration of the 1.87 dev server. With so many follow-ups of the dev servers, I think the patch will arrive probably next week. That's a wild guess, but uh, as far as I can tell, this is a very a good chance that it actually will happen and today I want to have a look at some of the vehicles that I previously had some of the changes some of the changes that still should happen and how they actually do in a test drive to give you a first hint how they play out again it's the death server everything is subject to change nothing is final maybe we'll see a third death server and we also saw some vehicles that weren't uh, there for me at least when the first iteration of the death server happened so uh, um, let's begin with the M1A1 Abrams or Abrams with the 120 millimeter smooth board uh, license build uh, Rheinmetall L44, if I'm not mistaken. And in this iteration or um, in the American version, it is called the M256. So uh, in the background, you can see the gameplay, obviously. The downside for this tank compared to the 105 millimeter variants is surprisingly not the um, reload because we still have five seconds, but we now have to rely on a stock heat FS shell. While it's not a bad heat FS shell, it's not good enough to stand up against composite armor or era protection space armor you name it and so there is a lot of uh, drawbacks and also it has a rather slow muscle velocity of 1140 meters per second compared to what you're usually used to namely AP FSDS talking about the MA29 AP FSDS it is now a tier 3 upgrade and this is now also a bit of a problem since um, with the exception of the Italians I think it seems like Gaijin has raised uh, on certain vehicles namely the costs of parts and fpe back to their old value um, i hope this doesn't go through to the live server and that we will not see a parts and fpe drama 2.0 so i think the abrams is still not free but at least parts and fpe should be it and uh, yeah this is what i want to tell you now about the M1A1 Abrams. One final word is here obviously to mention that this is the first American 10.0 battle rating rank 7 tank and uh, in that follow up the XM1 GM the premium tank has gone to rank 6 which is quite nice for all the owners of the uh, XM1 I guess so that their initial purchase is not um, obsolete. Now, let's talk about the other form of obsolete, and this is uh, the other thing called power creep, namely in the shape and form of the USS Brooklyn CL40, again, uh, test drive background footage, and this very impressive 15 6-inch gun armored, uh, armed ship uh, delivers quite a lot of pain. So, um, looking here at the reload for the main calibers, it's 6 seconds. Six seconds is very fast and with ripple fire you will not even come to the last turret before your reload is done. So very very impressive rate of fire DPM and also the accuracy is not bad. Add to this the sheer volume of fire and uh, yeah you get a very effective anti-ship ship. Now the stock HE is also very impressive and also the uh, tier 1 upgrade uh, 6 inch Mark 35 AP APCBC round is not bad. While not being outstandingly good it's still very much good enough to deal with anything that comes across it. Again at the volume of fire to it. And then as a tier to upgrade we get lo and behold a 6 inch Mark 34 HC HE with base fuse and with a 6 kilogram uh, TNT equivalent warhead or 5.88 kilogram this delivers insane amount of pain even to enemy light cruisers so very very impressive and the cherry on top of this is that you also get as a tier 4 upgrade the 6 inch mark 34 HC high explosive variable time fuse shell so aka your proximity fuse so this is an anti-aircraft monster especially since as your secondaries you have very good dual purpose six inch uh no sorry five inch 25 mark 13 aa cannons uh where they have um stock and he with distance fuse but then as a tier three upgrade also proximity fuses and 
four of those single mounted guns per side are really painful. But then we have a little bit of an awkward situation where we have no 40 millimeter, 37 millimeter, or 28 millimeter, or 20 millimeter mountings, and we go straight down to eight single 12.7 millimeter NM2 machine gun mountings. So it's a bit uh, of an awkward ship, but it's meant for long range engagement of other cruisers and destroyers and i think according to what we see here in the background it will do this job with uh, excellent results talking about excellent and again quite the opposite the sumner dd381 you can see again the background footage and uh, yeah it now is a choice when you have the fletcher if you research the sumner dd6692 or the summers the uss summers DD381. It's a bit confusing with all the numbers, etc. All three ships have the same battle rating of 4.3, and I think that the Summer DD381 is just simply the best. It has the most amount of guns, and there are also the excellent 12.7 millimeter, 12.7 uh, centimeter 538 mark 12 dual purpose guns in four double turrets so just simply one turret more as the Sumner and also we have 12 torpedoes and on the torpedoes the chance of them exploding when getting hit has been drastically reduced and uh, yeah uh, we have also some 1.1 inch quadruple mountings and some 12.7 millimeter machine guns uh, <sighs> When it comes to close quarter engagements, I think this ship can deal the damage. Uh, what else? Yeah, the armor, the protection, the speed, nothing is too special about it. And we'll see why this ship might be uh, first on paper quite impressive, but in practice not so much. Let's come to Germany as our second nation. And uh, finally, the gun emplacements on the Focke Wolf 190C have been fixed. Um, the Seahawk Mark... 100 at battle rating 7.7 .7, can engage 6.7 super props with air to air missiles so so much for compression and the borderline pay to win experience here then we have the leopard 2a5 and this is now a very cool tank for the germans rank 7 again battle rating 10.0 therefore as well um, the leopard a1a1 with the l44 has gone up in rank but not battle rating to rank six as a premium tank so now the germans have also a very strong lineup um six second reload for the rheinmetall l44 compared to the six uh, to the five second reload for an ace crew for the american m1 a1 um, but we have a stock ap fsds namely the dm23 which is still good enough then as a tier one upgrade the dm12 a1 heat fs round um, from what i see same stats as the um, stock h uh, stock heat fs shell from all the other l44 variants and also the abrams um, noticeably here is the colorful profile picture when you hover your mouse over the tank and this is therefore I guess the April Fool's copy and paste tank so very interesting right there and as a tier 4 upgrade we then get the DM 33 with 481 millimeters of penetration good stuff right there now we come to an absolute monster of a destroyer and this is the German type 1936A MOB um, it is a follow-up researchable from the type 1936 and it is the only 4.7 battle rating destroyer why is that well it has five guns okay five guns so what yeah but there are 15 centimeter 48 kc 36 cannons with overall 600 rounds of ammunition so this is the same firepower as the empton has minus one gun but you know this for a destroyer so you have quite the advantage in long range engagements you still have the precision and you have nearly all the ammunition so we have the scary stock he shell the even more scary 15 centimeter sprenggranat l4,4 with bodenzünder or he with base fuse and then also uh, again a cherry on top of this beautiful German cake of a navic destroyer is the 15 centimeter sprenggranat l4,5 
Zeitzünder, so HE with distance fuse. How this will work out with the rather slow turret rotation speed and the 5.7 second reload, we'll have to see, but still, versus other destroyers, this is one hell of a scary ship. So, I will quite enjoy this. And then we come to the uh, KMS Nürnberg, the new German light cruiser at battle rating 5.7. It looks not that much different from the KMS Köln, aside from the fact that the turrets are no longer offset as on the Köln. We lose half our torpedoes, so now we are down to 3 per side, but we are really increasing especially the low caliber anti-aircraft batteries. On the main batteries, we still retain the same rate of fire, the same amount of ammunition, the same shell types. And unlike uh, the Type 1936, we actually have a armor-piercing cap ballistic cap shell, um, which this destroyer lacks as a trade-off, I guess. And on additional to this, we also have the base fuse HE shell, the stock normal HE shell, and uh, yeah, also the HE DF with. Zeitzünder, so the flag shell. Very interesting for this ship as well. So this will be not quite as powerful as the USS Brooklyn, but still a very interesting, reliable ship. So that's it for Germany. Köln and Emden also get their flag shells. Let's come to the Soviet Union. Let's begin with the PR-30 Ognevoy, funny little destroyer, battle rating 4.0, small maneuverable uh, torpedoes, um, 37 millimeter anti-aircraft guns and two double 130 millimeter B-13 mountings. And additional to this, also a double turret of 76 millimeter 39K mounting. Um, the shells are a little bit surprising as the uh, 130 millimeter shells have the ZS46R high explosive variable time fuse, aka proximity fuse shells, but the dedicated anti aircraft turret, 76 millimeter double turret, only has a distance fuse. So interesting stuff right there. Um, then we come to the TATU, the new Soviet rank 7 battle rating 10.0 main battle tank. It looks cool, it is fast. 1250 horsepower for a 42.5 ton tank 70 kilometers per hour top speed the always reliable soviet smoothboard 125 millimeter uh, 2a 46 m1 cannon yeah um pretty nice looking tank but it still retains overall the same weaknesses and same traits as all the other uh, high tier soviet main battle tanks in this line in particular from the a T-64A onwards, so um, when we come to the crew, we have a reload of 7.1 seconds for the autoloader, the same weaknesses for the side shots, additional armor on top of the frontal hull, and the turret looks impressive, so <clears throat> yeah, thick, thick turret, um, also with some explosive reactive armor, contact 5 in fact, yeah, we'll see how this will work out. Um, quite interesting. Also very strong stock APF SDS. And the HE shell will be then good enough to shot trap the pesky German Leopard 2A5, where the armor on the Leopard 2A5 seems to be currently very much bugged, overperforming, you name it. But this HE will bring a steady solution to the uh, German upcoming Leopard 2A5 spam and uh, in good old tradition with those April Fools event vehicles I guess this T8U has a colorful profile picture just a little detail to top it off then we come to probably the most interesting vehicle of this patch which is the ZPRK 2S6 aka the Tunguska SPA the only 10.0 SPA and quite possibly even more powerful than the automatic and that tells you quite a bit so we have two 30 millimeter 2A38 automatic cannons with uh, 1936 rounds and on top of this eight 9M311 ATGMs as they are titled but they have a range of up to 8 kilometers 
with a maximum speed on the trajectory of 910 meters per second. So they will be quite a counter to not just only the helicopters from long range, but also with 41 millimeters of penetration because of 5.1 kilogram of TNT equivalent uh, warhead filling. It acts up a little bit like a 122 millimeter high explosive shell. And so you can splash the turret and uh, it will punch through the thin deck armor of enemy tanks and just knock them out. On top of this, uh, this vehicle has uh, hydro pneumatic suspension and also a very different or a very overhauled radar mechanic that I think now all the high tier SPA have, which is very interesting and quite, um, you know, effective when it comes to deal with enemy uh, planes, helicopters and tanks. And uh, yeah, you can also turn off the radar, which might be very interesting if you are in the anti-tank mode. So quite a vehicle to look at. I certainly will have a look at it with probably multiple videos. First impressions, tank review and just a maybe a meme compilation. I don't know. Let's talk about a meme compilation that is the Kirov 1941 light cruiser, you know light cruiser battle rating 5.7 we have three 180 millimeter triple turrets of the 57 b1p naval guns with 100 rounds per turret and it's just insane with 11 second reload i still think that this is way too short of a reload compared to what gaijin advertised on their dev block then on top of this we have uh 100 millimeter 56 b34 universal naval cannons with also um, if I'm not mistaken, proximity fuses. Yep, that, that there they are. Some 45 millimeter guns and 12.7 millimeter machine guns. The ammunition is highly, highly interesting. The HE shell alone delivers 13.43 kilograms of TNT equivalent. And you can see in the gameplay how devastating it is. Then the AP, also with a high mass velocity of 920 meters per second, can punch through up to 340 millimeters of steel and at 10 kilometers, still 136 millimeters. Um, the bursting charge is then therefore reduced, but there is an intermediate, quite literally the semi-armor piercing ballistic capped shell, delivering nearly 12 kilograms of TNT equivalent with still having 300 millimeters of penetration. That is mighty. That is really mighty. And again, then this cruiser has an HE with distance fuse with a 12.78 kilogram bursting charge on this mighty flag shell. So very, very interesting therefore as well. So this might mean some uh, destroyers and also some patrol boats. We will see how this works out. Very interesting ship. Can't wait to get my hands on this beautiful, beautiful monster. So then we come to Britain and we begin with the HMNZS Leander, New Zealand ship, battle rating 5.3. And this is because it's not the shiniest star on the horizon because it quote unquote only has eight six inch guns, 50 BL Mark 23. Um, the rate of fire is kind of average with a rate of fire or a reload of 7.5 seconds. The stock HE shell, not too bad to be honest, and the uh, CPBC tier 1 uh, upgrade is also not too shabby, but also not really impressive if I'm honest. So the lack of guns, the lack of rate of fire and the lack of special shells make this a little bit of a debatable cruiser, especially since this fragmented armor makes no sense, which makes also as little sense as the accuracy of the main guns. Yeah, I don't know what to say about this. Then we come to the Challenger and the Challenger 2 is the first um, British rank 7 battle rating 10.0 main battle tank. Therefore, the Shot Carl Dalet has moved up to rank 6 in its premium uh, rank. So <coughs> sorry about this. Quite nice right there. Then we have a stock shot L23A1 APFSTS, um, stock hash round, and then as a tier 4 upgrade the L26 round, which is not too bad. Also the speed with 12 
uh, with 1217 horsepower for a 62.5 ton tank. Not really bad, but could be better to be honest but this is just the British trade-off I guess so we have to live with this 120 millimeter L30 A1 rifled gun still nice tank um, a little bit high for my taste but really nice camouflage really cool design we'll see if Gaichen will adapt the gameplay the meta um, to allow a tank like this to shine in hopefully a hull down position Let's move on to the Challenger Mark III, which then has a additional ESS system. Um, I don't know if he used it uh, historically accurate, but whatever. Okay, doesn't really matter. Whatever Gaichin thinks. Then we come to Japan, and we begin with the Type 74G, the 9.0 rank 6 premium tank, because the Type 90 has moved to rank 7, and. Um, yeah, quite a nice tank, a cool camouflage selection, a uh, cool gun. <laughs> it has the 105mm L7A3 and um, yeah, that also affects a little bit the Type 74 because the Type 74, <coughs> sorry, has now as a stock round the M735. So no longer a APDS round, a stock round, but a stock APFSDS round at battle rating 8.5. Seven and then as a tier four upgrade, the new Type 93 APFSDS with 405 millimeters of penetration and positive normalization. Yeah, um, so much for power creep and balance. <laughs> so uh, at bat rating 8.9, 8.7 and 9.0 respectively for the Type uh, 74G. Um, interesting. We'll see how this goes as well as me now having some rank uh, 6 uh, lineup to grind with type 74g type 87 and type 74 with talisman yeah uh, and also the type 89 light tank so that's it for japan let's come to italy and let's begin with the sm92 which reminds me a lot like the bf 109z or z and we have a little bit of uh, additional ordnance here with two 500 kilogram bombs. Um, the armament has gone down from six 20 millimeters to three 20 millimeters and four 12.7 millimeter Breda machine guns. And it seems like we have also a turret which has only a 12.7 and not a 20 millimeter. Hmm. Okay. Then we come to the new G91YS. Um, beautiful plane and um, yeah it also has here's some sidewinders two of them um, so there we have it this is actually the loadout and the G91 R4 is the premium version with four of them bat rating 9.0 and they have one special trait and that is a brake parachute or brake chute um, you should use this very carefully. You only can use it when your wheels already touch the ground. Um, so they slow you down much quicker. But I don't know. Currently, this will always result in you ripping your own tail off because it slams it down into the ground. So probably better to uh, not use it. And also they have now the Ariete P at 9.7. It's still a rank 6 tank. So this means that the M60 A1 DC Ariete stays at rank 5 as a premium. But it has a lower battle rating of 7.7. .7. While I approve here the difference to the shot called Dalet in its overall performance, I disprove here of the 7.7 .7 battle rating. This has now the same battle rating as the Leopard 1, but with a stabilizer and proper armor and it's also not that slow so so much for power creep oof and the ariete p has probably the same gun with the same upgrade way as the german leopard 2a5 uh, with also a dm23 stock ap fsds run um, not quite sure about its armor but it doesn't really matter so also the automatic <coughs> has now the same uh, radar as the Tunguska. Let's now come to France. And yeah, there is the MD-460. Um, as you can see, also some uh, sidewinders, two of them, beautiful plane, bat rating 9.0, looks like a F-100D. Yeah, and uh, 
that's already the overlook over the um, dev server 1.87 again everything is subject to change nothing is final stats and will vary uh, maybe some other stuff will come maybe we'll see even a third iteration of the dev server but this is now my short overlook and it takes already way too long so there you have it um very interesting changes a lot of the stuff goes for the better but with the ship's accuracy problems especially on the leander where half of the guns misfire and uh, so forth there is still work to be done by the at the hands of the gaijin devs so that's it for me today thanks for watching thanks for listening please don't forget to give this video a like if it did subscribe if you want to see more and we'll see each other in the skies on the battlefields and on the waves of war thunder